Uh, next speaker is Peter Handley. <coughs> uh, Peter uh, is head of energy intensive industries, raw materials, and since recently also hydrogen uh, in the Direction Générale for internal market and industry. So he is basically Mr. Raw Material of the European Union. And what Philippe is in the academic world, he is in the world of the EU and the institutions of the EU. So we are, we are very happy to have you. You had uh, important positions uh, before. Uh, you were head of policy coordination in the uh, Energy Union. Uh, you did a uh, lot of work also in the British government. And you are one of the few Brits that I know who speaks French, uh, who has uh, been studying at uh, uh, ENA in France. And uh, I'm sure you're looking with great uh, uh, excitement to today, tonight's uh, evening football match between France and Britain. But before you have to have a duty and tell us in 10 minutes what is the EU's policy concerning these problems that have just been described. Please, Peter. Thank you. Thank you very much. And may I first say how much um, I appreciate being invited back and also the, um, the wonderful, uh, very challenging uh, introduction from Professor Shellman. I think it sets us up for a good panel debate. Since, since I was here a year ago, everything's changed. Um, notably, Russia's invasion of Ukraine has created a whole new uh, global paradigm, which has uh, had its impacts on supply chains. And it's also been one of the drivers for action by a number of um, countries and regions around the world, we, we amongst them. But look at what's been happening. The Americans have been rolling out their uh, Inflation Reduction Act, their Infrastructure Act, and uh, their defense um, procurement and stockpiling. The Japanese have been updating their Economic Security Act and reinforcing the powers of JOGMEC. Canadians have just rolled out a draft critical mineral strategy and just a few weeks ago decided to eject Chinese investors from three uh, critical raw material projects inside Canada. And um, on the international front, my team and I have been participating in the new initiatives set up by the International Energy Agency in its Critical Minerals Working Party. We're taking an active part in the Minerals Security Partnership established by the US State Department, and also in the new Paris Peace Forum called for action on global governance for critical minerals. Turning, turning to our own uh, plans in the European Union, shortly after Russia's invasion, the European Council had a reflection at Versailles and the declaration came out saying that the European Union had... We don't hear you right now. There is a, a problem. Uh, Peter, we can't hear you. Perhaps you have to... Uh, get restarted and uh, uh, since uh, you are not available right now I would uh, think we should come here back to the panel. Uh, Peter excuse me for this but we have to make use of that time and I would like to introduce uh, you're coming back I'm sure uh, and Technic will, will uh, make that possible but uh, I would want to come back to the panel here. And I uh, use this to get back to Peter. We interrupted you, or you, you were interrupted by, by the internet. Uh, and uh, of course, we don't want to uh, ask you new questions. You should, first of all, uh, finish your remarks. But perhaps you can also take in what, what Ingwil just said, and I, I saw you listening. Norway is not member of the EU. Is it nevertheless? considered a European country, which could be under the uh, support and the legislative uh, approaches of the European Union, as it definitely helps us to get less dependent on Chinese and Russian resources, as we just heard. Please, Peter. Happy yes, that you are um, back. And apologies, apologies for the uh, loss of internet connection. 
Uh, just to answer that question, indeed, Norway is a very close and trusted partner of the European Union. It's a member of the European Economic Area. And um, I'm not sure whether you, I reached the point in my opening remarks to say that we're currently finalizing our negotiations on a strategic partnership with Norway, covering critical raw materials and the batteries value chain. And on top of that, of course, we're working very closely with Norway on the supply of, of gas. Um, and uh, I, I see this continuing. We're about to also conclude a EU-Norway Green Alliance covering a much broader range of planets and energy. But uh, going back to where I think I, I lost my connection, the key thing is that um, the European Union has woken up to the imminent uh, danger it faces of not being able to achieve its energy and climate goals, as well as its defense and aerospace and digital goals, unless it really gets to grips with um, eliminating its strategic dependencies on, on far too few foreign suppliers for many of these critical minerals at different stages in the value chain. So as previous speakers have said, it's sometimes a challenge at, at the mining level, but much more often it's a challenge at the processing and refining stage. And we've actually got a mandate from the European Council to take much more ambitious action to secure our supply and to clean up the whole value chain. And so in September, Commission President uh, Ursula von der Leyen announced that we're going to prepare a European Critical Raw Materials Act. And that's the reason I'm not with you uh, in Abu Dhabi today, because every day counts. We're due to produce this legislation in March next year. So it gets through while we still have this European Parliament and this European Commission. And the purpose is to really identify what we're going to be concerned about. In fact, we're going to be going beyond critical raw materials and talking about those which are particularly strategic for the technologies that we've decided we need to uh, develop fast. We're going to be looking at how we can encourage member states to do much more systematic exploration. We're going to look at how we can develop sustainable mining. We're going to look at how we can reinforce the refining and metallurgical stages of the value chain. And we're going to be linking up the recycling phase with the refining stage. And we're also going to be looking at how we can recover waste, uh, recover critical raw materials from mining waste. And we're going to look at the investment tools we need to deploy to make this happen. We're going to look at how we can streamline permitting without making any weakening of environmental and social protections. And uh, we're going to be looking at standard setting and uh, trying to push the circularity and recycling targets as much as we can. And that's just on the domestic side because uh, as the president says, a lot of this is about building our own capacities to reduce our strategic dependencies. But we're also going to seek to diversify our external supply. We're already doing this. Last year, we negotiated agreements with Canada, which has already generated a, a large number of major investments. We also last year negotiated with Ukraine, and we're going to use this partnership as one of the building blocks for reconstruction of the country once uh, Russia's brutal invasion is over. And uh, this year at COP27, President von der Leyen signed uh, agreements on critical raw materials with both Kazakhstan and uh, Namibia. So apart from the one with Norway, which is currently about to be finalized, we've just started talks with Greenland. and. Uh, There'll be news about other strategic partnerships in the course of next year. And that's in addition to our work jointly with partners in the Mineral Security Partnership. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, Peter. That sounds very encouraging. Uh, and the, the picture I get here from all what you say is the consciousness now is there. Uh, action will be taken, strong actions from the European Union.